everyone, I'm Dr. Trevor Cates. Welcome to the Spa Doctor Show, where we talk about health tips and strategies to help you be smart, sexy, and strong. On today's show, I have as my guest, Dr. Mitch Fleischer. He's a dear friend and colleague of mine. Dr. Mitch Fleischer is a double board certified family physician with over 30 years experience practicing holistic medicine. He attended the Stanford School University School of Medicine, during which time he began his homeopathic studies in 1975. Dr. Mitch lectures throughout the United States and internationally on holistic medicine. He also serves as a professional integrative medicine consultant to several major healthcare institutions and corporations, as the medical director of a highly regarded nutraceutical company, as an editorial advisor and contributor for published texts, medical journals, and popular magazines on homeopathy and nutritional therapy. He's also the author of Alternative Dr. M Care, Natural Medical Self-Care Protocols Designed to Help People Help Themselves with Natural Therapies. Dr. Mitch is in private practice in the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains in Nellie's Ford, Virginia. In this interview, I share how Dr. Mitch Fleischer has been my own family's physician. And not only has he helped my family over the years with their health problems, our health problems, but he also helped me on my path to becoming a naturopathic physician. So I we talk about that. But today's focus is on natural anti-aging strategies. So Dr. Mitch shares five things he recommends for all his patients information on busting the cholesterol myth and the top nutrients, those very, the most important nutrients to protect and treat problems associated with aging, specifically for our eyes, brain, cardiovascular system, and skin health. So please enjoy the show. Today on the show, I have Dr. Mitch Fleischer. So great to have you on the show, Mitch. Thank you, Trevor. So Dr. Mitch and I go way back. Um, actually, Dr. Mitch is a big reason why I ended up going to naturopathic medical school. So I want to thank you for that. And I know it goes way back. I, and I was thinking about it. It's been 20 years, I think, since you encouraged me to go to naturopathic medical school. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, you know, it's been a great journey. And I remember going to see you were our family doctor and I remember going to see you and thinking this is the kind of doctor that I want to be and oh. I remember asking you you know how can I be a doctor like you should I go to conventional medical school what should I do and you said if I had to do it over again I'd go to naturopathic medical school <laughs> <laughs> and I remember that being such a big thing for me so thank you and it's great it's so great to be interviewing you today and we're talking about anti-aging strategies for the entire body, right? Right. Okay, well, Mitch, you know, I, as long as I've known you, I don't even think I know how you got into doing what you do. So can you share with us a little about your background and how you got into doing this kind of medicine? Sure, Trevor. That would be a pleasure. And I just want to say how incredibly proud I am of you and having graduated and really become an excellent naturopathic physician. You know, you're, you're like a quasi-daughter to me because Bill, your father is my best friend in the world <laughs> and the best man at my wedding. So I, this, what you're doing is just wonderful. Thank the you. next generation. Well, um, actually, my introduction to medicine started when I was very young. Um, my grandfather, my great-great-grandfather uh, was the um, only Jewish uh, physician to the Tsar of Russia. <laughs> so I go back generations, and uh, I had two uncles who were the doctors, and I knew I wanted to be a physician since I was about four and a half years old. Um, and they were all called straight doctors. Um, my grandfather used to take me on fa um, family excursions with him to see patients when I was a little boy, which was kind of fun. Um, and I got introduced to holistic medicine, uh, during the 1960s and 70s, uh, during that era where Eastern mysticism and Western science came together. I read my first uh, book on herbal medicine when I was 17 years old. It was John List's Herbal on Naturopathic Medicine. And I was so excited by all the pictures of the herbs in it that I would go into the woods near my home and collect a lot of them instead of growing and using them then. <laughs> so I was I sort of into it by then. And uh, by the time I got to medical school, um, I always already know I knew that I wanted to be a holistic physician. I thought I was going to go into Ayurvedic medicine and traditional Chinese medicine because those were only systems that seemed comprehensive and complete. 
Um, and then I got introduced to homeopathy uh, and realized, oh my God, here's a Western system of medicine that's incredibly comprehensive, and I have to stick needles in little kids. It's <laughs> not like pediatrics. And uh, it's just grown from there. Uh, I've studied uh, during my college years, um, uh, I studied a lot of nutritional medicine, did a lot of herbal medicine. Uh, went on retreats uh, at Dr. Christopher's farm and a lot of the different nat great naturopathic physicians from the last century who have all passed on. They're unbelievable people. Um, and so I had first-hand experiences. So a lot of the knowledge that I gradually gained clinically was from first-hand ex experience of what worked and what didn't work. And um, early in my career, uh, I, I, I would look at the uh, nutritional supplements from several of the companies that I was prescribing from. Uh, I was very carefully reviewing, are, the, are these companies producing the ingredients they're supposed to be using, what's their Q&A, all well, the rest of it. I was just interested in that side of it because I've always been interested in biochemistry, uh, better living through chemistry naturally, um, rather than Monsanto style. Uh, so early on, I was um, uh, suggesting to these companies, they could tweak it here and there and get all the fluff out of it and really put the right ingredients. And lo and behold, after a couple of years, they started asking me to be their medical director. So I was I turned out to be the medical director of about four or five different nutritional companies over the years, gradually started developing some of my own products. And everything I, I was using in my practice, in addition to homeopathic and nutritional therapy and integrative complementary alternative medicine, uh, they were supplements that were proven through clinical practice, things that actually worked empirically, they're not just theoretical. You know, I would read the science and say, okay, that's very interesting. Now, what happens in people on the front line of medicine when you actually give this and you actually give this dose? So over a period of about, uh, about 30 years in practice, the information that I've accumulated has been basically uh, firsthand empirical knowledge of how these different uh, nutraceuticals, vitamins, supplements, enzymes, herbs, what have you, actually work in people with, with direct feedback. Um, and my main interest has been in anti-aging medicine, um, which uh, evolved over the years, taking care of myself and my own family and friends, including your dad. <laughs> and uh, I've I just been amazed how incredibly potent uh, naturopathic medicine from the, this perspective is. I'm sort of a self-made naturopath, even though I'm, a, uh, I'm an MD, I really practice naturopathic and homeopathic medicine. Um, uh, just to give you a brief overview, I'm a family physician in homeopathy and family medicine. I do comprehensive homeopathic medicine, nutritional therapy, botanical therapy, bioxidative therapy, chelation therapy, all integrated together, trying to serve the, the patient where they need to be served. You give them the tools that they need to heal themselves. Um, and I, being, I believe very strongly in self-care and giving people the tools that they need to really uh, optimize their health rather than being the, the doctor on the pedestal nonsense that Stanford Medical School tried to make me into, which I never believed. <laughs> uh, and, you know, realize that we're, we're simply educators. We're educators and we're guiders. And the only way to really do that appropriately is to walk your own talk. Do it yourself like you have. I mean, you look great. So you're obviously you're doing all the, th the fundamental things to stay healthy. Uh, and some of the basic things I teach my patients, uh, there's, there's, there's five basic things that people need to do to stay healthy, that I understand now from my years of practice. Um, it's very, very, very important, even more important today than it was when I first began practicing, to eat organic non-GMO foods, because there were less of them back 30 years ago than there are now. Now, I mean, virtually everything is GMO if you're not careful about it. Uh, all the wheat is GMO for the last 35 years, almost all the soy, all the corn. Uh, I'll, if something says natural on it, it's probably GMO. So I teach my patients how important it is to eat uh, organic non-GMO foods and get a good balanced diet uh, and uh, according to their own unique physiology. And we do special tests uh, to ascertain what's the best particular diet for you. Not everybody should be a vegan or vegetarian or lacto. We find it's physiologically appropriate then people have to drink a lot of good quality pure water. The vast majority of illnesses out there are a lot of people who are dehydrated. You know, they, they're, <laughs> when they're, while they're exhausted or their brain is not working or they're peeing bright green, you know, green or whatever, a lot of people don't drink enough water. They drink too much uh, Coke Zero or something like that. <laughs> I just had a patient come in doing that yesterday. He said, are you kidding me? You're coming to a drinking Coke Zero? Throw that out. 
<laughs> and um, also, people need to get regular exercise. Uh, this is critical. This is not just something you do occasionally. And you know that from personal experience by being into fitness. Fitness is critically important to overall health. And I teach them uh, about all different kinds of exercises they can do, whether it's for weight loss or, or physiological balancing and regular detoxification. That's critical to maintaining health. Uh, and uh, getting adequate sleep. You know, it's not good to run on four or five hours sleep a day. You you don't. This was a very interesting uh, TED talk uh, recently, wherein uh, these uh, this physiological research showing that the brain needs sleep in order to detoxify because it's the only organ in the body that doesn't have lymphatics. So the way it works, when you sleep and go into REM sleep, you have this flush of fluid down the capillaries that detoxifies your brain. So a lot of people are walking around foggy headed thinking, oh, you know, it must be all what I'm eating or whatnot. No, it has to affect they're not sleeping enough to flush their brain out. So that's important. And the last thing I found that's very important in this day and age, because of the um, uh, low quality of most produce and foods that are out there, unless, of course, you really get it locally grown and organic, uh, is to do uh, cleansing drinks, especially green drinks. Um, and I, we do that. My wife and I do that a lot. I try to convince my patient to do that. Uh, drinking organic, uh, non-GMO, greens, detoxifying drinks on a, on a regular basis is quite important, not just for your digestion, but to regularly chelate all those heavy metals and toxins and uh, biologicals out of your body. And having the, I've seen that on a long-term basis. Having my patients do that, they're much healthier. You're able to balance uh, endocrine function, thyroid function, metabolism, get rid of constipation. There's so many things you can balance. You can correct dysbiosis. And also people's skin looks really good when they're regularly detoxifying every day. Not just once every quarter, but on a daily basis. Uh, and it's not difficult to do. There's a lot of really good sources of, of organic greens out there. I know that you've created something really good. And I use a source and I'll share that source that I use. Uh, but in addition to that, if you do those five basic principles for, for balancing and maintaining health, uh, I found that there's specific nutraceuticals that you can use that really definitively enhance um, a decrease, a reduction in the oxidative stress that causes a lot of the aging process. Because that's essentially what most uh, anti-aging therapies are directed at, uh, is reducing the, the burden of oxidative stress in the body. Uh, and if people don't understand what that means, um, it's the excess production of free, uh, free, radical, oxygen, uh, free radical oxygen uh, uh, molecules that actually rust and burn our tissues. You know, uh, uh, hydroxide, superoxide, all of these different um, uh, free radicals we produce normally uh, through metabolism. Instead of all the 10 trillion cells in our body, you have these little organelles called mitochondria that burn the, the fatty acids and uh, sugar to create energy. And in that burning process, oxidative phosphorylation, you create sparks. Those sparks are free radicals. And if they're not calmed down, they will injure the mitochondria, which decrease energy production and weaken the cell's ability to be able to repair itself on a regular basis. Because you need the energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate, ATP, to be able to run the cell's machinery, chemical machinery. Uh, so the first thing we do is uh, make sure the diet contains an, an, enough of a supply of high quality uh, antioxidants to keep that in check. You don't want to completely decrease uh, of free radicals because they're important for metabolism. You don't want to completely decrease inflammation because that's the way the body heals itself. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that the way your body fights infections uh, uh, and fights cancer, all those things, is for, through the inflammatory process. But it's in keeping it in check and in balance that allows your body to heal itself without injuring itself. You know, allergic inflammation, autoimmune inflammation, which is being allergic to yourself, which is mostly induced by environmental toxins, whether it's uh, PCBs, PBBs, dioxanes, phthalates, plasticizers, heavy metals, mercury amalgams, all this. All of those things cause excessive free radical oxidative stress, excessive inf uncontrolled inflammation, and that's what damages all of our organs and tissues and leads to rapid aging. So there are specific agents I've found that are very effective in calming that down. Uh, the first thing I'd like to talk about um, uh, is a, a really excellent compound that is a combination of three uh, agents that I've found to be the most effective uh, in combination in helping to control inflammation and oxidative stress not only in the brain 
and to improve neurotransmitter functioning and repair of the cytoskeletal structure of the brain, but also helps the eye, the retina, uh, and all parts of the eye, uh, which essentially the back of the eye is an extension of the brain, actually, and the, and the other part of the, the front of the eye is an extension of the, the same tissues that create muscles and skin. And, um, and then also the nutrients in this can also help the heart and the cardiovascular system by decreasing inflammation in the lining of the blood vessels, that's called vascular inflammation, which is what re leads to hardening the arteries. All that nonsense that Big Pharma promotes, has been promoting for the last half century about cholesterol being the, the big killer is complete nonsense. And in fact, there was a, a study just released, uh, it, was, it was a review study that was released in the New York Times uh, at the end of last year, where the epidemiologist admitted that all that when they reviewed all the research on cholesterol and on statin drugs for the last several decades, there was no benefit of using the statins or any of the approaches. And it wasn't cholesterol that was the problem. They realized definitively, cholesterol is not what causes heart disease. It's three things, too much sugar, too much refined carbohydrates, and trans fatty acids. Everything that Big Pharma and the, and, and the corporate food industry has been pushing on us for almost three or four decades. So they've been creating the disease so they can throw drugs at us. It's a big scam. So um, I let people know that what you want to do to prevent cardiovascular disease is not worry about cholesterol. Don't worry at all. In fact, it's been shown, and I did this experiment myself, that dietary cholesterol does not raise serum cholesterol. It doesn't do it. I ate six eggs before I went to bed one night and, took, and then did my uh, a blood cholesterol in the morning, and it was lower than it was when I was avoiding them <laughs> because we have a negative feedback. Your body makes cholesterol for all every single cell in the human body. The, the, the shell of every cell, the cell membrane, is made of 50% cholesterol, 50% phospholipids, which are the structural, uh, the structural and functional lipids. And uh, also cholesterol is the backbone for all of the adrenal hormones, all the adrenal corticosteroid hormones that control sugar balance or water balance, stress, immune defenses, they're all made out of cholesterol, the backbone. And when you're under stress of any sort, and we're, who is not under stress these days living in America, your adrenal glands send a signal to the liver to make more cholesterol so you can make these steroids. If you artificially lower the cholesterol, you go into adrenal fatigue, which will lead to thyroid fatigue, which will wipe out your whole system. You'll have no energy. And I've seen that time and time and time again. Um, so what we really want to address is not the what they what a big pharma's talk uh, said it what conventional medicine said because they're basically wrong and they'll be that eventually will come out in another fifty years <laughs> they'll admit they're wrong because it's already starting. Uh, but we want to address when we're trying to prevent heart disease and cardiovascular disease is the inflammation of the lining of the blood vessels due to fr excessive free radical stress due to dietary insufficiency of antioxidants poor choices in nutrition. That is, someone who's living on fried foods and, or just cooking with oils a lot, creating a lot of, uh, a lot of people don't know when you, when you use uh, polyunsaturated fats or, or vegetable oils um, to cook with. Every time you heat an oil above 140 degrees Fahrenheit in the presence of oxygen, it, it creates these bonds with carbon carbon oxygen that are, uh, that are called lipoxides or fatty acid oxides. Those are the most dangerous of all free radicals. So when you go to McDonald's or Wetson's or any of those stores or Kentucky Fried Chicken, you eat those fried foods, you are consuming the most dangerous free radicals that are getting into your bloodstream and they are burning the lining of your blood vessels, the intima or the endothelium, and the body tries to repair itself. And in that repertory process, it creates these plaques that it, it's like a scab inside your blood vessel. And the body's trying to do what's right. And when you keep on eating like that and injuring yourself, it eventually clots off, and then you have heart attacks and strokes and peripheral vascular disease. So really, ever, all of these diseases come down to excessive free radical stress and excessive uncontrolled inflammation. So how is it that we control those things? Well, one of the agents that I found to be most effective in helping the brain, the eyes, the uh, heart and the blood vessels, as well as the skin, um, uh, we want to protect the skin from radical stress so we can look good and, and be healthy. Um, and uh, we're exposed to all sorts of toxic chemicals that impede the skin and increase free radical stress. Even uh, ultraviolet light, what, it, what, it, what ultraviolet light does when it penetrates the skin of very fair skinned people especially, uh, that will get absorbed by the biomolecules in the skin 
and you develop what are called superoxide radicals, which are some of the most dangerous uh, radicals, and they will then attack the, the protein infrastructure of the skin that is made out of collagen and elastin fibers, protein fibers. And when you damage those fibers with free radicals, they curl in on themselves, they kink. And that's what all of those wrinkles are all about. When you see someone, a, the face of a smoker and it's all wrinkled up, that's due to all the incredible free radical oxidative stress you get from cigarette smoke. Or you see someone who's working in a factory that is exposed to free radicals, that's what all those wrinkles are about. Uh, so there are specific agents that help to quell, that really effectively absorb those superoxide radicals and help repair the skin. And in the same way, can help uh, quell that uh, excessive superoxide or, or hydroxide or hydroxyl radical activity and all the rest of the tissues and help repair them too. It's an ongoing process. Uh, the one agent that I find uh, the most effective is something called astaxanthol. Uh, it's A-S-T-A-N-X-A-N-O-L. Uh, the, the, and just a lot of people look at this word and they say, how do you pronounce that thing? And just to let you know, the X in the middle of the English word is pronounced as a Z, uh, not as an X, only at the beginning of the word. And this is a combination of, uh, uh, of the most powerful of all the carotenoid uh, uh, bioflavin uh, uh, antioxidants called astaxanthine. And there's a lot of research showing that astaxanthine uh, helps quell uh, superoxide radical inflammation in the eyes and the brain and the heart. Uh, it decreases arthritic inflammation and the degenerative joint disease. Um, uh, it's very well absorbed because it's very what's called lipophilic, that is fat loving, so it's highly bioavailable. There's some good organic sources. The source we have in astaxanthol is in, made from our organic source. Uh, the, one of the other agents in it uh, is called CNL P. And CNL P uh, is a very interesting compound I've been working with for over, for over two decades. Uh, it's very little known yet in the United States. It was developed in Korea. And uh, it's uh, what's called a fluoratanin. And it's an extract of this a special seaweed, brown, uh, brown seaweed, called Eclinia cava. And what's very unique about it is that some of the most powerful anti-aging plants in the world grow in very hostile environments. And they've developed phytochemicals that help them survive in that hostile environment. And Aboriginal peoples learned to ingest those things because they saw the plant was living, maybe it'll help me live, like Siberian ginseng and things like that. They really have some wonderful things in it. Well, the brown, this, this brown algae that grows off the Sea of Korea uh, lives in an ocean where cold water and hot water, warm water come together and it's extremely turbulent. So they've developed this very, very complex bioflavonoid. And what's unique about it is that, in, in like, as we know about, like green tea extract or uh, grapeseed extract or pine bark extract or ginkgo biloba, all of those are water soluble. Water soluble. And water soluble supplements don't really get absorbed into the body much. Uh, most people don't know if they take 100 milligrams of a good quality grapeseed extract or green tea, they're only actually absorbing about anywhere from 2 to 3 percent of it. The rest of it's not really getting into your body. So you have to take a lot to be effective. Also, the half life of any nutraceutical, any, any phytonutrient is extremely important because if it doesn't hang out long in your body, it's not going to do much. And the half life of almost all of the land based, water soluble uh, antioxidants is only about 30 minutes. So if you really want grapeseed extract, green tea extract, all those things to really work, you have to take it every few hours throughout the day to get even blood levels and tissue levels. So there's a lot of benefit to taking ones that are very fat soluble, that get into the body much, much more easily, have very highly bioavailable, and have a very long half-life. Uh, astaxanthine has a fairly uh, good half-life of several hours. And what's unique about the CNLP, uh, the colonicaba extract, called the fluoratanins, it's as if you took you know, uh, 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 one of the green tea extract molecules, like catechins, epicatechins, and you strung them all together in a long chain. The, more, the larger the molecule is, the less water soluble and the more fat soluble it is. And that's what the seaweed had to do in order to, so, because why would the seaweed produce a water soluble substance that would diffuse out into the seawater? It produced one that was very fat soluble that's stuck in the plant and picked the plant. So when you imbibe this product, the fluoratanins, they have a half-life of 12 to 24 hours. One dose will last you until the next morning. And it has a bioavailability of up to 98%. So you take it and you get 98% of it, which is pretty significant. What's also significant, again, if you want to get it into the brain, you have to cross the blood-brain barrier. Water-soluble substances do not cross the blood-brain barrier into the brain. So the green tea extract, grape seed extract, all of those things don't get in there really.
Uh, and the same thing with the eye. The eye has a blood, uh, there's a, an ocular or ophthalmic uh, blood barrier, and it will prevent things from getting into the retina, which is an extension of the brain. So you want something that's fat soluble, lipophilic, and very bioavailable to penetrate those tissues to benefit the eyes. And also, when you wanted to get into the cells, uh, the lining of the blood vessels or in the heart are penetrated to the skin because the underneath the, uh, the, la- the, the, the top layers of the skin, the five layers of the dermis, you have a fat pad layer. And I found that, that this, a- this combination of agents uh, uh, will, will saturate that fat layer and act as an absorptive barrier to any UV light and not only uh, absorb superoxide radicals, but actually prevent any, repair any damage to the collagen elastin fibers. It also prevents uh, and repairs damage to the DNA in the lowest level, the tra- stratum spinosum of the five layers of the dermis. Uh, and therefore, when you repair the, de- the, the free radical damage to the DNA, you have less neoplastic change. So you prevent basal cell carcinomas, you prevent squamous cell carcinomas like your dad had, you prevent actinic keratoses, all those crusty things. Uh, I've even had patients who have had uh, cerebral keratoses, you know, the barnacles, those brown things that people uh, uh, get all the time. That's due to excessive free radical stress. It's not precancerous, but they're very unsightly. And by taking high quality, very lipophilic, very bioavailable antioxidants that will concentrate in those tissues, the body very uh, gradually repairs itself and those things fall off and people feel and look younger than they did. Okay. So the other, other than the um, uh, astaxanthine and CNLP, p and the CLP has a lot of research behind it. The fluoric tannins have been, have, have been studied in Korea, Japan, and now India for their phenomenal uh, effect on helping prevent cardiovascular vascular disease, stroke. They actually use it as a medicine in those countries that the doctors prescribe for treating heart attack and stroke. Uh, and, and also they're doing studies on cancer too and the treatment of diabetes and diabetic complications. So these are serious nutraceutical medicines in those countries, whether it's the United States, it's recognized as grass, generally regarded as safe. So we can have it as a supplement. We can't call it a medicine, but it is. It really is quite powerful. So those two agents are, I, I've combined with something called, uh, called gamma-linolenic acid, GLA, which is an omega-6 fatty acid, which is actually the most important fatty acid and antioxidant for the skin. That comes because the skin uh, doesn't use omega-3 acids, whereas the brain and the heart uses mostly omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, to have, keep it in repair and in balance, prostaglandin balance and antioxidant balance, the skin uses gamma-linolenic acid. So the combination of those three things are really good for the skin. In fact, when I was prescribing it to my patients for other reasons, and uh, I had a patient in Texas who was so fair-skinned, she looked like a ghost, and she was working and living in Houston, and she would walk from one building she was working into another, you know, a three-minute walk. By the time she got there, she would have a sunburn. Uh, and she would have to use all these toxic uh, sunscreens, uh, which I highly recommend against. A lot of the sunscreens have been shown to actually cause the, the skin's cancer they're supposed to prevent because they become worse free radicals when they absorb a UV light. And if people want to learn about that, there's a really wonderful uh, website. You've heard of the Environmental Working Group, ewg.org. Great article on, uh, um, uh, on the, all these topical sunscreens and tell you what to avoid. But as it turned out, she started taking uh, four of the astaxanthal to control some inflammation in her knees. And she noticed that she wasn't getting the sunburn anymore. So I had some other patients reported the same thing to me. So my wife and I went on a trip down to uh, the Caribbean, uh, one of her first vacations together, and I did an experiment. We both, uh, in St. Thomas, in pretty hot blazing sun there. You get sunburned very easily. Uh, we took four in the morning went snorkeling all day long for six hours with no sand tan lotion, no sunburn, no, just a beautiful tan. So it really works well for that too. And uh, uh, that helps, that's a, that's a definitive direct effect of, of, the, the, of saturating the, the skin with very, very potent lipophilic antioxidants. So you're creating an internal barrier, an internal sunscreen to protect the skin. Um, the other thing I use uh, astaxanthal for is for anybody who has cardiovascular disease. If they have established coronary disease uh, um, with blockages in the arteries or ongoing inflammation, and one of the best ways to uh, test for uh, inflammation for the 
naturopathic physicians and other doctors out there. The test I generally uh, give to all my patients is called the C-reactive protein cardiac. If their C-reactive protein cardiac, CFP cardiac, is elevated, you know that they have ongoing vascular inflammation that can, that's going to predispose them to cardiovascular disease in the long term. And you want to get that below three. That's extremely important. The other most important test that I, that I uh, look for, that I always test in almost all my patients, is a hemoglobin A1C, looking for sustained excess sugar in the diet. They're showing that if it's above uh, um, uh, 6.7, I know they're pre-diabetic. And that will also cause free radical disease and the damage to the tissues. So that uh, lets me know, that it helps me to encourage them to get, to get the sugars and the refined carbohydrates and trans fats out of the diet. I can show them a figure saying, look, your hemoglobin A1C is elevated, your C-reactive hemoglobin is ele elevated, you're a setup for heart disease and diabetes and the other things, let's get you on this program. And then when we start them on the program, I give them the C I may give them this astronaut anthazanthal, two capsules twice a day, they elevate their levels to saturate their tissues, and we see the CRP, we, we get an objective measure of the CRP cardiac going down. So they can see the effect. They can see that's a measure of the internal organs. And if you, if you can see that effect in the CRP, you know the inflammation is going down universally in all tissues. You're decreasing inflammation in the brain. You're decreasing inflammation in the eyes, the heart, the blood vessels, the skin. And this is exactly what you want to do. Um, one of the other uh, uh, agents that I use uh, uh, for treatment of, of the eyes to help improve uh, um, the Visual acuity help prevent cataracts, which are due to oxidative stress affecting the lens. Uh, and also, uh, one of the main things that causes cataracts, a lot of people don't know, is a substance called sorbitol, which, which is a breakdown product of, of, of fructose. When people eat too many, uh, drink too much uh, um, uh, fruit juices, refined fruit juices, which we shouldn't be drinking at all, we should just be eating the fruit with the fibers in them and the nutrients. When we eat too much sugar, uh, when we uh, have anything with high fructose corn syrup in it, we are actually causing cataracts because that, that stuff gets converted to the eyes. So when I see that happen, I will give them a, an agent called Brilliant Vision, which is a very comprehensive uh, uh, supplement that's total eye care. It not only provides nutrients that help prevent, protect the retina and re uh, or repair the uh, part of the uh, eye that is an extension of the brain that helps repair the nerves and help prevent macular degeneration. Uh, but it also helps decrease oxidative stress and repair the, the cornea and the, the lens as well. Uh, and I can, I'll send you information about those things so you can share them with people. Um, one of the other agents that I found that's very, very effective uh, in helping people to deal with heart disease in particular is um, a, a product that's based on the principles that were enunciated um, uh, Bob one of those brilliant scientists in, 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 the, in the world, really. Um, and he was a doctor that I actually had the pleasure of studying with when I was in medical school. Uh, and that's Dr. Linus Pauling. Uh, I actually got, when, when, when Linus spoke at Stanford Medical School, I actually got to run his projector. And boy, he had the biggest eyebrows in the world. They would fan you. <laughs> really smart guy. But what, what, I think one of the most brilliant things that Linus Pauling did was do this brilliant epidemiological research showing that human beings were one of the few mammals that had lost the ability to create vitamin C. And having lost that evolutionary benefit, it predisposed us to a lot of diseases. Uh, the, the creatures that normally produce their own vitamin C, if, if you... Uh, it, don't tend to develop heart disease and cancer like we do. Um, and if you take one of those animals and you compare it to a human being, and you would, by, by, by mass, the volume of vitamin C produced by our mass, human beings should, should be producing anywhere between 10 to 20 grams of vitamin C a day, 20,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. Now, if you took that by mouth, you would have a lot of, you'd be pooping a lot. <laughs> uh, but there's ways in which you take it that your body can tolerate it. Uh, and it, what he discovered is that human beings, when they lost the ability, uh, when we evolved from primates to create our own vitamin C, started developing a lot of cardiovascular disease, a lot of chronic degenerative disease, because we couldn't handle a lot of the free radical stress. And the more, the, the more we got away from the paleolithic diet, 
which was very high in uh, raw uh, fruits and vegetables, roots, nuts, and, and berries. Uh, and the ones that evolved over 10,000 years ago were not the fruits and vegetables we have now. The fruits and vegetables we have now are all genetically engineered to be very, very sweet and have less antioxidants in them. Uh, whereas the ones back in the past, if you were eating uh, an heirloom apple that has not been um, uh, engineered over the years to just be highly sweet, they're very tart and very fibrous, and you take one bite and you're chewing for a half an hour. <laughs> and people, you know, a lot of people, oh, I don't like that. That's the healthiest kind of apple. And that's what fruits and vegetables were like. They were very high in antioxidants, very high in fiber, very high in fiber nutrients. Not like what we have in the grocery store now. So when we ate those things, we were getting a tremendous amount of vitamin C in our diet and a tremendous amount of bioflavonoids in our diet. We no longer, you know, it was, it, there was uh, some interesting paleoepidemiological studies done. That is, epidemiological studies done by uh, paleontologists that look at ancient man and ancient women. And they estimated that the, the diet, the paleolithic diet, probably provided about 10 to 20 grams of vitamin C and bioflavonoids. Whereas the average American diet looked at in 1980 onwards, we're lucky if we get 100 milligrams of vitamin C and bioflavonoids in the average diet, especially people who are living on Kentucky Fried Chicken and Wonder Bread that kills your body in 12 ways. Uh, you know, we're, we're doing a better job in training our patients to do that, uh, but this is one of the reasons why I suggest people um, take green drinks, which are full with those phytonutrients, which is like getting all those natural organic fruits and vegetables into your system again. Uh, the other thing that uh, Linus Pauling noticed is that one of the main things that, that causes people to develop cardiovascular disease is damage to the, the elastin and uh, um, collagen structure of the blood vessels. And when they are continually bombarded with free radicals, uh, free radicals have, uh, tend to not only crinkle them and make them harder, which is really what hardening the arteries is about, but decreases their elasticity. And so if your blood vessels are less elastic, what's going to happen? When you have blood flow through them, it's Lavoisier's law, your blood pressure goes up if it can't expand to accommodate the blood flow. So that's what a lot of hypertension comes from, uh, due to a lack of it's oxidative stress damaging the blood vessels, not only causing the plaques, but actually a lot, disallowing the blood vessels to expand and contract normally. Uh, and he saw that when people didn't do things to repair the elastin and, uh, and collagen structure, they would become fragile and brittle. And then when blood vessels get brittle enough and you have high blood pressure, they crack open and bleed. And that's one of the causes of stroke and heart attack. So how do we prevent that? Well, a combination, he did research that showed a combination of high dose vitamin C with bioflavonoids and the two main amino acids that collagen and elastin are made of proline, L-proline, and L-lysine. Those are the main amino acid proteins that which those fibers are made. If you have that in a diet, that will help repair the collagen elastin structure so it, re it re regains elasticity. And you also are able to reduce the amount of atheromatous plaque, the parting of the arteries. Uh, so his, his Lysol Pauling Institute put together a combination of vitamin, high-dose vitamin C and these amino acids and did quite a bit of research with it, and it was it really worked. And uh, what I did was I took that research and uh, and further research that developed on how do you get once you have hardening the arteries, once you have calcification of the arteries. Just to give you a brief overview, a lot of people don't know what, what is an atheromatous plaque. What's an atheroma? A T H E R O M A. Well, when you have an injury to the lining of the blood vessels from free radicals that have burned it, and especially occur, occurs wherever you have a curvature in the blood vessels, like in the neck or on the heart, where there or this high blood flow and the blood is hitting it, there's a friction effect on that lining, on the intimate epithelium. And if you have a lot of free radicals, it will cause a chemical burn of that tissue. The body then tries to repair itself by uh, taking a special protein in the blood called fibrinogen and it breaks down into fibrin, which is like a cobweb, and it lays it down over that. That's like the first, the first like, layer of a scab. And then it captures the special... Um, organs inside the cells inside the blood called platelets and the plates are captured and the platelets release chemicals that are both cytokines that attract blood vessels, uh, blood cells to repair, like white blood cells to repair the tissue and also uh, chemokines extract other chemicals to help repair the tissue and that inflammatory process can start building up. 
when the white blood cells are attracted to that tissue, there's a cell, a particular cell called the macrophage, called the big eater. And when it gets there, if you have uh, um, uh, uh, damaged fats there, uh, one of the other things that happens in the bloodstream, the, the, the free radicals are not only damaging the lining of the blood vessels, but they'll damage other elements that are floating in the blood. And the main elements that carry cholesterol and fats in the blood are called lipoproteins. And you have all different kinds depending on the side, very low density lipoprotein, low density lipoprotein, intermediate density, high density lipoprotein. The HDLs are considered the good cholesterol because they are what the liver creates to shuttle cholesterol from the liver to all the tissues, like the muscles, the organs, the adrenal glands, where it does its work. Uh, so that's considered the good cholesterol. Um, and the LDL cholesterol is what um, carries the most cholesterol and triglycerides in the body. Now, in its normal, healthy, reduced state, unoxidized state, that cholesterol is perfectly healthy. It's not going to cause any damage. When you have excess free radicals in the bloodstream, attack this LDL particle, it will oxidize the, the cholesterol. It's the oxidized cholesterol that's abnormal. That develops a weird charge that so when it floats downstream, when that damaged LDL particle finds an area, crosses an area of the lining of the blood vessels damaged, it chemically bonds to it. And then white blood cells come and gobble that damaged cholesterol up and they fill up with it. And those white blood cells, uh, those macrophages, when they get filled up, they, they're, call, uh, they're called foam cells and they die and it becomes this goopy paste, white oscillized paste against the cell. And this becomes a chronic inflammatory process. The way the body deals with chronic inflammatory process is to lay down a layer of calcium. And this is what's called the granulomatous process. That's what a granuloma is. When you develop tuberculosis or, or brucellosis or diseases in the lungs, the way the body walls off that infection is by calcifying it, the calcified nodule. It, the same thing happens in the lining of the blood vessels. It's actually a chronic inflammatory granulomatous process. So you have calcium layer, uh, uh, oxidized fatty foam cell layers, then fibrin layers. So in order to get rid of that, you have to dissolve all of them. And you can reverse that. It's, it's been known that we're very, very strict uh, vegan diets, like Dr. Sears diet and other doc, uh, diets will, will help this process uh, by taking nutrients that help uh, take the excess calcium, what's called metastatic calcium, out of the lining of blood vessels and put them back in the, into the bone where it belongs, that will help. And one of the best nutrients to do that is vitamin K2, metatrium. Vitamin K2, is one of its specific functions, is to pull metastatic calcium out of the, the soft tissues in the body and put it back in the bone. When you have an adequate amount of vitamin D, called a calciferol, not D2, that's ergocalciferol, that's that's actually plant sterols that have been irradiated. I, and anybody who's on vegan vitamin T2, get off that stuff. It's garbage. You want to be on D3, calicosiferol, uh, usually about uh, 5,000 IUs a day, international students a day in adults, and about one to 2,000 in kids. Uh, that'll protect your body uh, uh, from cardiovascular disease, from Alzheimer's, from diabetes. From uh, it's, a, it's the best way to prevent... Uh, flu, colds and flus because it supports your immune system and your T-cell function. And it also uh, has been shown vitamin D levels when you get them at a certain range of 40 to 70 percent, nanograms percent, will, will prevent 12 different kinds of cancer, right? So vitamin D with K2, in, incredibly important to pre prevent aging of the cardiovascular system, that together. And then when you take uh, the combination of, of a good quality of vitamin C, lysine and proline, vitamin K2, uh, vitamin D, uh, citrus bioflavonoids, that hesperidine is one of the best ones for that, out of the lining of the, of the white part of the, of the fruit. Um, that combination will help to repair the lining of the blood vessel and reverse cardiovascular disease. And I've had patients who have taken a particular product called CardioPro that has all this in it. CardioPro, it's a really, uh, we made it into a powder because the amount of capsules you have to take it, if you had to take that much vitamin C, would be ridiculous. So we made it into a good tasting powder that's like uh, organic tang. It's a nice orange flavor that helps the citrus flavor of the go down easier. And a scoop or two of that a day, you're getting all the vitamins you need, all the, all the L-lysine, all the L-proline. Uh, we use magnesium ascorbate. Because rather than taking uh, pure ascorbic acid, which can be a little bit burning in the stomach, uh, magnesium ascorbate is buffered, and the magnesium is essential 
for uh, replacing the excess calcium in the blood vessels. Most people in uh, the Western world, particularly in the United States and Europe, they have way too much calcium and way too much iron in their diets. And we're all total body magnesium deficient, total body mag uh, iodine deficient, uh, uh, total body essential fatty acid deficient, and vitamin D deficient. Those are the ones we're mostly deficient in. But more than anything else, we need um, uh, good amounts of good quality of magnesium any day. So we put mag magnesium ascorbate instead of oligosorbic acid. So all those combined together, you just take that. Uh, I've had patients with carotid vascular disease. I had one guy, he's a NASCAR uh, uh, mechanic. I've known him now for almost 20 years. He came to me originally, and his uh, cardiovascular surgeon uh, uh, wanted to put him on the table to uh, cut out the plaque from both arteries. On the right side, it was 98% occluded. On the left side, it was 95% it was occluded. So he was a setup for a major stroke and dying. Plus, he had heart disease. And he said, I ain't doing that, doc, because he had a 5% chance of dying on the table. So we put him on that product. I put him on acetaminophen. I had him do chelation therapy and change his diet, get off all the beer, stop smoking. And within two years' time, uh, this side is down to 60%, which is safe, and this side is down to 30%. And his surgeon was really pissed off at me. <laughs> but he's really happy. So you can reverse chronic degenerative disease with, uh, with uh, following the five basic principles we spoke about and taking specific anti-aging nutrients for the brain the eyes, the heart, and the blood vessels. It really does work, and I've seen it in clinical practice over these years. That's great. Well, Dr. Mitch, it's just a wealth of information. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. And, you know, it's, it is, I think, important for people to realize that as much as we can eat a healthy diet, that we there are a lot of nutrients we just can't get from our food anymore. And there are specific nutrients that really help the aging process be easier, you know, protecting our heart, our, our brain, our eyes, and, you know, having that glowing skin and have that, you know, all the things that we've been talking about on the podcast and the summit, you know, these things are important. So really appreciate your information today. Thank you so much for the interview. My pleasure, Trevor. It's been, a, it's been a pleasure and a blessing. And Dr. Mitch, how can people find you? I'm going to put up uh, the link to your website on my website or the podcast page, but how? just tell people how they can find you. All right. I, I have uh, uh, two websites. Uh, one is uh, www.alternativemedcare.com. It's a lowercase case, A-L-T-E-R-N-A-T-I-V-E-M-E-D-C-A-R-E.com. That's my main website. And I also have a website I've created. Uh, I created about 15 years ago for my patients. So I had a lot of patients uh, after they got better. Uh, they wanted their own aunt, aunt, Uncle Ed and Aunt Sue out in Montana to get better too. And if I couldn't see them, I began giving protocols to people. Um, and because I really believe self-care is an important way to go. And uh, um, in order to be able to reach more people, I created a website uh, it's called Alternative Doctor M Care. It's D Alternative D R M Care dot com, uh, and it is a site where I have what I call natural medical self care protocols, over a hundred of them, that teach people how to use naturopathic nutrition and homeopathy for their own self care, uh, for basic things. You know, everything from acne to colds and flus. And in fact, on the front page of Alternative Doctor M Care, uh, and it's Alternative D R M C A R E dot com. Uh, I have a free cold and flu protocol that they can test for themselves and find themselves uh, that see how that works. Uh, and inside, you you can have everything, anything from gastroenteritis to broken bones to fractures to cardiovascular disease. And uh, if they have questions, once they uh, join the website, they can just send me questions and I'll answer them for them. Because uh, I really encourage people to learn how to take care of themselves. And there's some wonderful, wonderful tools we have available to us that we didn't use before. Uh, the science of nutritional medicine is expanding phenomenally, and it's very, very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thanks so much, Dr. Mitch. Thank you very much. God bless. Oh, there's one more thing I wanted. The, the, I had mentioned that I was going to uh, share with people uh, the site for the, uh, the uh, organic non-GMO greens that I use. Uh, I get it from a source. Uh, it's www.mypurium.com forward slash hrwellness. It's my, M-Y-P-U-R-I-U-M dot com forward slash H-R-W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S. -S. And what I use personally, and, and uh, my wife, Laura, who's becoming a, an integrative med nutrition coach, is something called Love Supermeal, which stands for Live Organic Vegan Energy. 
delicious, 100% organic, non-GMO. Check it out. It's good stuff. Okay, great. We'll have all those links up on my website as well. Thank you, my dear. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Dr. Mitch Fleischer. To learn more about Dr. Mitch, you can go to my website, drtrevorcates.com, go to the podcast page with his interview, and you'll find all the information and links there. While you're there, you can also subscribe to the Spa Doctor podcast so you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes. Thanks, and have a great day. We'll see you next time. <music>